Uh, this is your 19th season with Paul Taylor. It is. Yeah, and really it's been 21 because I spent two years on the second company before that, so it's a long haul. Well, it's a, but, but you know, when, when you see someone who's decided to put their career in the hands of a choreographer, mm -hmm. and at some point you had to realize that was what you were going to you do. You know, it's funny, I don't know that I ever actively made a decision like that. Like, this is where I'm going to be, I'm going to stay here for, it just kept going. I think I initially said, I'm going to stay here for 10 years. And at 10 years, I said, I'm going to stay here for five more years. <laughs> and then when I hit there, I was like, I'm going to go on a year to year now, and we'll just see how long I still want to do this. And it just hasn't stopped. So, I, so I'm just curious, what was the first work that Paul set you in that he choreographed on you? He heard me. It would be Cascade, which is on the season this year, actually. No, I'm not in the same role that I started in. I was one of you know the background boys. and I switched into the duet with Michelle Fleet, right. actually. Um, because he, when I was looking things over, you came, I think, a year or two after he did the Piazzolla. Yeah, piece. I was in, I think I was in the second company as he was maybe just finishing Probably, the dance, because yes. I was there for the premiere. I was around for the premiere, and when he was making the film Dance Maker, I was on the road with Taylor Two in, in India. They filmed some of us, but it just never made the film, which it didn't need to be. It was really about the company. You said there's a... I've seen that work, and I've seen you travel through the work in different mm -hmm. roles. In different parts. <laughs> no, well, you know, that's one thing I love about, about, about Paul Taylor, uh, the way he works with his, his company members. It's not like, okay, you're going to be Mother Capulet from now till mm -hmm. the end of time. You're this, and then you learn this, and then you learn that, and, and, and you kind of grow within mm -hmm. the character of the piece. Mm -hmm. I think that comes from him watching us grow as an, I mean, so many of us stay for so long. So he gets to see us grow up in a way. And I think he recognizes things, oh, maybe I haven't challenged them in this way, let's move them over here. Or, wow, they do that really well, let's do them, give them this part in this dance. So I feel like that evolution just happens naturally with him watching us grow and dance. Beloved Renegade. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay, my God, okay. I'm so yeah. bad with titles. Oh. <laughs> I mean, to watch you in that, uh, everything is a subtlety, everything is a nuance, but it's so well stated. I mean, I always say it's inherent in the dances that he makes whenever he presents them. Although with that one, I honestly did not think it would have the resonance or the impact or the lasting, like the long lasting what? that it has. The, 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 what am I, what's the word I'm thinking of? The, the uh, longevity? The longevity. Thank <laughs> you. The longevity. Um, when we made the dance, I actually, and I know everyone, I thought it was a clunker. I really thought it was going to be a miss. I really thought it was going to be a miss. And I think it was because my role in the dance is so minimal that I felt un disconnected. Like I wasn't really engaged with what was happening. And it wasn't until the premiere that Patrick Corbin, former Taylor dancer, came up to me afterward and he was in tears. And he said, this is a masterpiece. And I said, what? Like I just couldn't figure it out. I couldn't wrap my head around it. And later I think I saw some film of it. I'm not big to watch films of myself doing dances, but I did see it, and then it started to make sense. And maybe And maybe the more I've lived in the dance and, and I, I'm there as the observer, like I feel like the voyeur, maybe the, the representation of Paul and his sort of position in life, he's always watching people and I feel like he kind of bestowed that upon me within the dance. So I think as I've grown and watched the dance more, 
it's grown on me in return and I found like a deeper understanding of the dance and a connection and just it's one of those dances that's great for me to do because I don't do very much I can really let my mind go and just be as into it as possible and as subtle and minimal so it's a challenge it's, it's really like it's not what you're it's not what you're doing it's how almost you fit into this the whole scenario of mm -hmm. things and you are like a wanderer throughout you just kind of take us on this journey to the, the final beautiful moment mm -hmm. you know you know, he, before he made the dance, he came to me, I forget when it was, and asked me if I had read Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. And I said, no. And he really just walked away, and I thought, wow, this man has never asked me if I've read a book before. He must want me to read this book. And so I, gra I got it immediately and started reading it, and then came to pass that he was making Beloved. And it was a really interesting experience watching him make that dance, too. I think there was something very special and he was working through something personal as he made the work and it definitely affected all of us as a cast. Mm -hmm. Well you see it though, I mean it's, mm -hmm. it's so strong, it's one of my favorite pieces, that and Promethean Fire, I mean mm -hmm. I, could, I could see that every day. Yeah, I could do it every day. <laughs> I feel like some days I do it every day. Probably. You know, yeah. And have been for a long time. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's, uh, that's another special thing, I mean mm -hmm. the way he, and, but he manipulates the box so well mm -hmm. all the time, I have mm -hmm. to say that, you know what. Those pieces are all genius, but that one to me just particularly grabs me. Oh yeah, visually, just yeah, stunning. Yeah, emotionally, it's just it builds so well, and it's, I think it captures uh, the essence of almost American modern dance right here. <laughs> Well, you know, when it, it, we talked about Promethean fire, but yeah. that one, that center guy, and the girls wrapped around him, and all of a sudden the crescendo comes oh, in yeah. and, just and he just lifts her up. From nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's not even a plie, it's mm -hmm. just goes for it. Magic. It's that Taylor <laughs> magic moment. Those moments you're like, that cannot be possible. Right. It's inhuman. It's but deadlifting. But and it's just, it's like, my God. Mm -hmm. Athletes of God. That's what But that, yeah, <laughs> that's but I, true. I, I have to give it that. I mean, mm -hmm. and you feel that when you watch it. It, it does have an American modern dance oh. feeling. Absolutely. I mean, it's All of his work. I mean, I think it best captures the Americanness almost of a, of a country like built into these dances. It's amazing. Now, in this upcoming season, what are you looking forward to? Oh my God, there's so many. I mean, always the live music aspect. The fact that we have that now is uh, any dance with live music makes me happy. Um, Paul's Rite of Spring, his Le Soft de Printemps, the rehearsal, is one of my all time favorite dances. So, so anytime fun. it pops up on a season, it's so bizarre. And it is, I mean, stabbing. The, yeah. I, won't tell, I, won't tell, I won't give it away. No, you ha if you haven't seen it, you have to see it. It's amazing. It and is. the music, the two piano score of that Stravinsky piece is just the, all the little details. I love, I love playing in that dance. It's so smart. Um, confusing. Confusing as all get out to most audience members that can't quite wrap their head around it. But I just, I love it. I love getting lost in that. Um, I mean, I love that we're doing that Icons Night with Promethean Fire and Diversion of Angels by Martha Graham right. and the Cunningham work in the center. I mean, 
That's going to be incredible. That's incredible to just be on the stage with those three works happening in the program. Yes. Like the highlight of the season, really, for that one night only experience of seeing Martha Graham, Cunningham, Taylor, like sharing a program unheard of. And know, so, so it's such an honor to be, to, be being, to be able to share that with the audiences in New York. I mean, that's something I hope in the future we're sharing more often and taking on the road with us. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I've noticed uh, over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, the company has included other choreographers, mm -hmm. guest dance companies, guest choreo you know, guest guest works, mm -hmm. and I think that is such a um, magnanimous mm -hmm. move on his part because he doesn't have to. No, I mean, it just shows that he wants the company to exist beyond him, and that he cares about the state and the preservation of American modern dance as an art form. I mean, I don't think anybody else is really doing it to that w in the way he is, in honoring like the past, the present, future. Like really, it's it's incredible. Uh, when uh, last season was rainbow around my shoulder, I thought that well, you know, it's, it's important because to see number one, a company like Dayton, mm -hmm. who doesn't get a chance to come to New York enough and be mm -hmm. seen, be put in a Lincoln Center environment, which is a once in a lifetime thing. Yes. And then to do this wonderful work and have. Uh, Donald McHale come in and re make sure it's tight and coach them and restage it. And, to ha and then to come to New York and do it like that was just incredible. It's such an education for us, too, in the company, to be able to witness these dancers and dancers up close and share the stage with them. I mean, it's kind of incredible to live inside the Graham work, to watch this, to do the Doris Humphrey the year before that Lamont did. I mean, they're wow. right there. We're sitting in the wings watching them. I mean, well, how better to learn about the history of modern dance than by seeing it and right in front of you. And he's choosing that Pasacaglia and Few. If you read her Art of Making Dances, mm -hmm. that is, everything that she says in the book is in that right work. Mm -hmm. You know, I danced that work in college, so it was nice to see it again and just how it resonated differently after years away from it. How did it resonate for you? That's interesting. Um, I, I, rem I mean, I remember the feeling of dancing it, that heroic sort of majestic thing. And so to see that again, it made me think, oh, I did capture the right essence way back then, 25 years ago. I was on the right track. Um, and just the structure of the dance, the brilliance that's so smart and simple and elegant and all of those things that I remember loving about it the first time even were amplified this time. And so I want to thank you for taking this time out. Yeah. To kind of give us not only the season, but just a, a brief history. And, and it was a pleasure finally meeting oh, you and talking pleasure. to you. Please. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs>